It's time to go on the record with WRAL News. After 48 years of coaching, Roy Williams said goodbye to the job he loved. He set a standard that will be hard to duplicate. He won 18 regular season championships, seven tournament championships, nine Final Fours, and he won three national championships. Good evening and thank you for joining us for this special edition of On the Record. I'm Gerald Owens. Roy Williams has been out of coaching for nearly two years now. We recently had the opportunity to sit down with him to see how life was like outside of the bright lights and crowded arenas. What we found was a much more relaxed man than the fiery coach we watched stalk the benches at Kansas and UNC. A very content husband, father and grandfather. An avid golfer able to sharpen skills that lay dormant during the many grueling months of a college basketball season year after year. And we saw a man who was free to show the public a much different side of himself than we've seen before. That was apparent in a WRL commercial we produced for the Super Bowl, starring a very famous mystery guest who did it because it benefited cancer research. WRL News Talent Search, roll camera. Let's take you to breaking news with our new reporting team. It appears that we're having some audio issues. Oh no. Let's go to weather. It's not even hurricane season. Did anybody check their references? Let's go to Live Center. I feel very secure in my position. Has anybody heard from the breaking news tracker? He's not going anywhere soon. Oh, send Sky 5. Don't we have some new hotshot pilot? Oh, never mind. Get the cat off the desk. All right, let's cue talent. Who let these two in the same studio? That's going to be a problem. We, we got this. Thank you, guys. In the news. WRAL News. Most watched, most trusted, most spirited. I really thought I had the job. Don't worry, coach. You'll get them next time. And uh, it's touched me. I lost my mom many years ago to it. My dad also passed from cancer. Uh, the best friend I had here in Chapel Hill had pancreatic cancer. So to me, uh, anything that I can do to help provide funds to the cancer hospital here in Chapel Hill is something I want to do. I've, for the last 10 years or so, I tried to give five days a year that I would go somewhere and do something, make an appearance, play in a golf tournament, whatever, for cancer. In the past year, I've gotten it up to 10, mm -hmm. uh, because it is, it's gonna to touch everybody, and it's a hard battle. It's, uh, you gotta keep fighting it, but hopefully one of these days we'll get a cure. Was it difficult to convince you to do this, to put on Ramsey's head and, and go through this? No, it sounded really silly and sort of crazy and I said that's right down my alley <laughs> you know I'm retired now I don't care you know I'm 72 years old when you get to be 72 you don't really care what you say or what uh -huh. people think and when you get to 72 and you're completely retired you really don't care <laughs> and so I thought it'd be something my grandchildren could laugh at me and that was mm. really the bottom line I thought that when they see this if it works and if it ever comes out I said the grandchildren they all they all laughed themselves silly would you have done this five years ago uh, it would have been harder then, you know, because it's just three years, five years ago, I was afraid to give away two hours because I thought somebody else was going to be working during that time. Mm -hmm. But I still tried to do a lot of things, but not like I am now. But uh, as I say, when you get older, you don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really grass is green to where I'm standing, regardless of what other people think. <laughs> Anything surprise you about life as, in retirement? You know, I, I retired for what I thought was the right reasons for me. I wasn't doing it as well. My high school coach is still extremely important to me. He's 82 years old, and he said, well, you really, your whole life, you've been such a difficult grader, a hard grader on yourself. And I said, yeah, and I'm glad I was. But I just didn't feel like I was doing it as well. I wasn't my health. I wasn't sick or anything like that. Uh, that's all it was. And I miss it tremendously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's hard to uh, particularly sit there and watch our games. Uh -huh. You know, I'm squirming in my seat and <laughs> want to yell at the referee or yell at a player or something like that. But more time to uh, the past 18 months uh, to see with my children and grandchildren, and I've really enjoyed that. The first year of retirement, did Wanda have to say, okay, pump the brakes, big guy. You're not coaching anymore. Uh, no, uh, you know, I sort of keep it even more to myself now. I try not to 
bring it home even when I was working. I'd say, well, what would you think? And she'd give me her three or four minutes, and that's about all we would talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I would most of the time I'd go to bed, and when she went to sleep, I'd get up and stay up all night after a bad loss or any loss, basically. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, so for me, uh, that is the good part. You know, I, I, it's, it's not my life. It's not the first thing I think of in the morning. It's not the last thing I think of at night. It's not involved in any decision I make, whereas for 48 years, coaching was involved in every decision I made. And uh, so that part's good. And it's uh, one of the best things that's really silly is that I sit right beside the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So when the players go out after the game, I go right behind them, go up the steps in the parking lot, get my car, and I'm almost home before Hubert gets to his press conference. <laughs> and I love that part. <laughs> That's uh, it. Without having to talk to anybody. Yeah, and, and it's <laughs> neat because the fans over the last year and a half, last year and so far this season, they understand that before the game I'll take pictures, sign autographs. But when I come out that back door, I'm getting in the car and I'm heading to the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that part's, uh, I, that's the most enjoyable thing is how quickly I can get out of the building. <laughs> He's more of a fan now and watches the games religiously and wears his loyalty to the university and its new coach on his sleeve. And people don't realize that the last player I helped recruit as Coach Smith's assistant was Hubert Davis. And I feel like that when you cut Roy Williams, I'm going to bleed Carolina blue more than anybody. And Hubert's right there with me. Uh -huh. He's the nicest person I've ever known in my life who is also fiercely competitive. And regardless of what North Carolina fans think, it's not our divine right to win every game. You know, <laughs> I felt that a little bit more as a coach than I do now because I'm still a fan. I just think he's the perfect coach, the perfect human being to, uh, to be the coach at North Carolina. So when the game is going on, I'm interested in the game. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the game's over with, I just want him to be feeling good. That's all I care about. Do you guys talk often? Does he reach out to, for advice? Not much, and I try to make sure that I don't reach out because I want it to be if he wants something, I want him to, you know, I, I sneak in the door in the office. They gave me a little, what used to be a little storage room. They gave me a nice little office over there, and I'll sneak in there at times and sneak out. But uh, it's his team, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, uh, as I said, I miss it tremendously. If I, if I could snap my fingers and go back to 52, uh, I would have done it for another 20 years. <laughs> I, I sort of wanted to win a big game and go in the locker room and act silly and uh -huh. get right to the door of the press conference. And before I went in, just drop over dead and I win a big game and not wow. have to talk to the media. So, <laughs> that's pretty final. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I wanted it to be. I really didn't have in my mind that I ever wanted to retire. And so, but it's been good. It really has. But uh, right now we've got the right man and uh, uh, he's, he's absolutely the best. So fans should say, give him time. Oh, just, yeah. well, the one fan that I know personally, I said, shut up. Because <laughs> you don't know enough to even make those kind of statements, uh -huh. you know. But to the fans, just understand we're going to be okay. And uh, Hubert Davis is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Have you learned anything about yourself? that you had forgotten as being involved, so involved in basketball for 48 years as a coach. I think uh, if there is anything, it's feel how lucky I am because I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And uh, Luke Bryan's a country singer and he has a song that uh, I'll paraphrase a little bit. said said, find something you love to do and call it work. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did for 48 years. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the big thing is, is how lucky I was to do that, and it's like I say, I miss it tremendously, but it was the right decision. Uh, but that's, uh, I didn't know what to feel, so it, I didn't have any game plan or anything. I just uh, knew it was the right time, but uh, um, I was I was fortunate. I never went to work a single day in my life. I really <laughs> didn't. I didn't. I never felt like I was going to work. I was uh, doing what I wanted to do, and I think I'm highly blessed. When we come back, we get Roy Williams' thoughts on name, image, and likeness and the transfer portal, two of the biggest changes in college sports in decades. When Roy Williams left UNC, the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness were in their infancy. They represent a drastic departure from the rules and philosophies that govern college athletics for most of his coaching career. Coaches don't like answering hypothetical questions. You're not coaching anymore. Yeah. Someone will try one. Okay. Okay. You're in a boat. You have two oars. You're taking on water in choppy seas. NIL and transfer portal are on board. You got to get rid of one of them or the boat sinks. Uh, I jump in the water and swim. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> uh, NIL, I'm sort of on the fence because 
you know, we did need to make it better for kids. I still go back, Peyton Manning's a friend in his last year at Tennessee. They sold some, I'll miss the numbers now, it's a long time ago. Uh, they sold something like 50,000 jerseys with Manning name on the back at $56 a clip, and he didn't get a cent. That's not right. Okay, come on, you know, we can make it better. And I think with the cost of attendance and changes we've made in the last 10 years, it has gotten better. But we're going over a little more now, you know, uh, it's every kid in junior and high school has got an agent. And, you know, you have to talk about how much money you can make. And that, I'm old school, and that's not what I think college athletics should be. But mm -hmm. I still think we can make it better. And, and we have made it better, but I think we could make it even, even more. But it's gotten a little Wild West attitude of anything that's go out there now. So the transfer portal, I don't mind a kid transferring. I do believe as you make a commitment, you ought to be tough enough to handle a little adversity, though, instead of coach yelling at you on Saturday at game day in the middle of a football game and you transfer on Monday. Uh -huh. I think that's sort of stupid. So I don't mind a kid transferring, but I do think they should have to sit out of here. You know, and they said, well, coaches don't have to get sit, you know, sit out. Well, coaches get fired. Right. I mean, I've never fired a player. I thought about it, you know, sometimes. <laughs> and, and, uh, but so there, there are things that uh, I wouldn't enjoy as much but it had nothing to do with me making the decision. But I think the purity of, the, of college athletics is something that I loved. And for me, my whole life was trying to take a group like you guys, uh, everybody to make sacrifices for a common goal for the team. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really loved. And so that was uh, those two issues, both I'm in the boat, which one do I throw out? I'd leave both of them in. I'd go ahead and swim. <laughs> I'm not a good swimmer. I'd go, go my own way. <laughs> uh, in your opinion, have they been to the detriment of college basketball? Not yet, uh, in my eyes. But again, I'm not involved now. I'm not sitting in that living room and somebody says, well, so-and-so is offering us this kind of thing. and Because that would really bother me a great deal. But uh, you know, when North Carolina and Duke play, when North Carolina and North Carolina State play, it's still the Tar Heels against the Wolfpack, and it's still the Tar Heels against the Blue Devils, and it's who's going to play the best that night. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting cold chills even talking about that because that's, to me, what college athletics is about. Have you coached your last game in, at any level? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. I sat on the bench with my son watching my grandson play the other night. I was keeping stat <laughs> thing for him. But, uh, you know, it... Uh, I've had one or two two people reach out to see if I'm done, and I told both of them I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, where I'm standing is really nice, and uh, uh, I play. I've done something this year that I'd never done in my life. I played golf in December. Mm -hmm. I played golf in January, mm -hmm. and February's coming, and I've never played a round of golf wow. in February in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, those parts I really like. But I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm done. There's there's not enough money to uh, make me go back. Have you cut your handicap in half yet? No, with, with the knee surgeries, I get, using that as an excuse, but it's, I'm going to be better this summer. I've, I play in a couple of tournaments, and I love the competition, and uh, uh, I do gamble a little bit, and I enjoy talking trash, and, <laughs> and I enjoy taking the trash. At, uh, but uh, uh, the golf, when I was coaching, the golf course was the only place that I could go and lose myself. I, when I had a putt on the 12th green, I wasn't thinking about who I needed to call that night. Mm -hmm. And in every other thing I did, with the exception of hugging and playing with the grandchildren, uh, everything else I did, I could be in a meeting with uh, uh, anybody, and I'm still thinking about what am I might need to do for our basketball team. Mm -hmm. I could be eating the greatest meal ever, and I'm thinking, what time is it I've got to make a call? Uh, but the golf course was the one place that I could get away, so I'm still enjoying that. What do the grandkids think about your retirement? You know, they thought it was pretty neat, the two older ones, uh, now 13 and 11, uh, but they really enjoyed going to the games and making some of the trips. And the two youngest one, five and three, they didn't have any idea. Right. And, uh, you know, I was concerned about uh, uh, Scott and Kimberly, our two children, and uh, Scott just wanted to know if he could still get Jordan shoes. <laughs> 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 and uh, Kimberly was uh, a little more emotional than, than Scott was, but uh, mm -hmm. she's a dance instructor. It's all she ever wanted to do, and she owns her own dance studio. So in my eyes, she's closer to coaching, mm -hmm. and, and Scott's in the financial world. It's a business. And, uh, uh, but I was, I was very emotional at the time when I was telling both of them. With all the success Roy Williams has enjoyed in his illustrious career, his favorite memories may surprise you. 
Every team's different, mm -hmm. uh, even if you have most of the same players, mm -hmm. because it's a different year, things are different, people get injured. Um, is there a time or a period in your coaching career, a five-year period, where you said, you know what, that's the best of my career? That's my most favorite time as a coach. Oh, gosh. I loved practice, mm. you know, and I loved getting after them, and I loved seeing them improve. I loved the relationships and in today's kids, you know, they've always got the earplugs in and everything. Mm -hmm. And that didn't bother me. I'd walk up behind it. the kids say, if you'll turn around and say, hello, I'll give you a hundred dollars. And they just keep walking. <laughs> I'd say, what about a thousand dollars? And they'd keep walking. And then I'd point at another teammate and he'd pull it out. And I'd say, how about 2000? And the other guys were laughing. So I'd, I'd mess with them all the time. But uh, no, I, I, it was the greatest thrill for me every single day. Because mm -hmm. I loved it, and it's, uh, but I'm, uh, it's, uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. And it was time. I was 70 years old, going to be 71 in three or four months after I retired. So, mm -hmm. so it was the right time. But uh, uh, it's, uh, I had a friend that uh, uh, gave me some golf balls, and uh, pulled them out and looked at the numbers. And the guy brought them to me. And, one of them had the number nine on it, and another one had uh, two zeros, and another one had three. And I said, he said, do you have any idea what that stands for? And I said, 9,003? We won 903 games, not 9,003. I would have loved that. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, that's what I thought you would say. But the fact of the matter is it was uh, nine Final Fours, three national championships, and double zero regrets. And that's, 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 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, some of Roy Williams' most memorable moments on the court came against another legend, Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski. They were on the bench for some of the hardest-fought games in ACC and NCAA history. So I wanted to know, was the, what was the relationship off the court? Was there a friendship? The rest of our conversation next. When you say friends, that means somebody you socialize with. And, mm -hmm. you know, for 100 years, it seemed like he had his family and he had his team. And that's the way he went. And I had my family and I had my team. And that's why, you know, we didn't go to dinner. Uh, he doesn't play golf. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't go on vacations. There's nobody in coaching that I competed with uh, in the ACC, anywhere other than Coach Smith. There's nobody that I respect more than I respect Michael. Mm -hmm. And I mean that sincerely. When I was coaching at Kansas, we were on a lot of NABC, National Association of Basketball Coaches, mm -hmm. committees, and invariably we, we almost always had the same outlook what was best for college basketball. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we thought the game similarly. Uh, we thought it was good to have kids to play extremely hard and to play for the name on the front of the jersey, not just the name on the back. Uh, so nobody's got more respect than Roy Williams has for Mike Krzyzewski. But when you say friends, that's somebody you go play golf with. And, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't do that because I say I, I'm totally devoted to basketball and my family. And so was he. Mm -hmm. And then in the off season, you know, we're still recruiting. We see each other. We'd always say hello. We'd, uh, so I would say friends, but not the kind that uh, uh, you stay with a lot. But if I were to see Michael walk in the door right now, I would smile. And that's pretty good. With coaching and recruiting behind him, Roy Williams satisfies his competitive drive these days on the golf course. You have a dream for some. You may have already played it. Yeah. Uh, I, anybody, you know. Yeah. It, that's an easy question because it's, it's not uh, uh, Tiger Woods and Beyonce or anything like that, you know, <laughs> which wouldn't be bad playing golf with a couple right. of people like that. Uh, but uh, it's very easy. It's three of my buddies because mm -hmm. there's nothing better than being out there. And I've, I've been very fortunate. I mean, I've played, I mean, Jack Nicholas one time said, Coach, come here and watch my golf swing and tell me what you think. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what, are, what is the matter with you, boy? Uh -huh. and, uh, and I've been fortunate enough. I played uh, 27 holes with President Obama. Wow. And I loved it. It's one of the greatest days I've ever had on a golf course. But if I'm going to go out and play golf, I'd rather be with my buddies than anything because mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I play golf now, one of the guys I played with, I played Little League Baseball against. Wow. You know, and so for me, playing with my buddies is the best thing. And but like I say, I've, I've been very fortunate to play and be in tournaments where other people are around and 
President Obama was a thrill of my life uh, to be able to play golf with him, too. And does he get extra, like, strokes? Uh, does Secret Service kick the ball out and back in the fairway? He was my partner. Oh, good. So I told the Secret <laughs> Service people what to kick, which ball to kick out. No, it was, I probably shouldn't even be saying this, but uh, we, had, we, had, we had a great time, and he had two young aides with him, and I said, uh, uh, he said, Coach, do you think we can play these two young guys? And I said, these young pups? And he went, oh, my gosh. So he called them young pups the rest of the round. <laughs> and at the end, we beat them, and he made them pay up quickly. And uh -huh. <laughs> it, was a, it was one of the nicest days I've ever had. Was that nerve-wracking on the first tee? No. No, it's golf ball and me swinging. That's what it is. And so uh -huh. but I've, I've played in some tournament. I played in a tournament one time where a guy said, Coach, if you make this, we win $50,000 for our charities. And... I backed off of it. I said, why would you tell me right. that now? Come on, man. <laughs> uh, so that's the only time I got nervous for a second. I said, heck, it's, it's, it's charity money. Mm -hmm. so, it, so I made it. There you we go. Went, I made it and we All went right. on. <laughs> but uh, my dream foursome would be, would be my buddies. Mm -hmm. Or if, the, if uh, the youngsters grow a little bit more, it'd be my grandson's granddaughter. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that'd be the fun of my life. After visiting with Roy Williams, it was clear to us why he was so eager to don the Ramesses costume to benefit cancer research. The laid back, affable, true blue Carolina loyalist wasn't stepping out of his comfort zone. He was inviting us into it. We hope you've enjoyed our special edition of On the Record. You can hear my exclusive conversation with Roy Williams on the WRL Daily Download podcast right now. It's available in Apple Podcasts or just go to WRL.com and search podcast. And of course, Roy Williams was quickly joined in retirement by Duke legend Mike Krzyzewski. Coach K spoke exclusively with our Deborah Morgan about his transition to coaching from coaching to retirement. You can see their full conversation in a special edition of On the Record on WRAL.com. If you have something to say about tonight's conversation, perhaps some memories of Roy Williams you'd like to share, even Duke fans, go ahead and chime in. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash WRAL. Or you can email us your questions, your comments, and your criticisms to onTheRecord at WREL.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.